Astrolabe was the worst mistake since Poopy Time Fun Shapes. But after a year of tyranny, Astrolabe is finally no more. And the metagame can finally start to heal. And boy does it need to heal because Astrolabe completely warped the metagame. And here is why. Ever since Fetch lands in Modern, three color decks have a huge advantage over two color decks. Nobody wants to admit that because three color decks make the format both more expensive and less diverse. But three color decks used to be kept in check by decks that run main board Blood Moon. And these Blood Moon decks used to be really common. There was Mono Red, there was Blue Moon, and Daddy's favorite White Red Prison. But thanks to Astrolabe, all of these decks are completely gone from the metagame. Like, Astrolabe literally sent these decks to Jesus. Because Astrolabe made it so you can play a three color deck with only basic lands. That makes no sense. Why? Why? In a nine month period prior to Astrolabe's release, there were a whopping 114 decks that ran main deck Blood Moon. But in that exact same time period, after Astrolabe's release, that number sinks to only 62 decks. And the result is a metagame that is packed with decks that are pushing the limits of what a deck should be allowed to do. But with Astrolabe finally gone, it is time for us to heal the modern metagame with this masterpiece here. Six Blood Moons with the new Big Girl Chandra. She deals two damage to any target while upping herself or her other ability. We just her hand and exile top three cards of our library. We can play those cards until the end of turn. Coming out with six loyalty is pretty good. And she's really good value the longer she stays out. For a while, I was going back and forth on what colors to use for this deck. But then I realized it had to be a red green deck because during this whole Astrolabe debacle, the one Blood Moon deck holding down the fort was Gruel Midrange. So as a thank you to them for enduring Astrolabe, we also be red green. Our decks have a lot of overlap, but also some differences. The big difference obviously being Chandra, but also Tireless Tracker and two Blood Moons in addition to Magus of the Moon. Also my favorite addition, Huntmaster of the Fells. Huntmaster used to see a lot of play back in the day. When it comes to play, we get a 2-2 token and gain two life. And if a player doesn't play a spell for a turn, it flips into a 4-4 Trampler. That deals two damage to our opponent and also two damage to their creature. And if a player plays two spells in one turn, it transforms back into Huntmaster and we get its ability again. Really cool card, works really well with Blood Moon, which makes it very likely that our opponent won't play a spell for a turn. But alas, Huntmaster is nowhere to be found in the metagame. And in the spirit of today, where we are rediscovering forgotten archetypes, Huntmaster just feels like the right choice. So I am most excited about that. As for the rest of the deck, we're basically shooting for a turn two Blood Moon, or if we're lucky, a turn two Blood Braid. We have some good blockers that buy us time to get out our long term threats, like Clothia that basically does everything, Little Chandra, one Ren and six, and two Scavenging Uses. But on the sideboard, we have creature hate a lot of it. Blue deck hate, artifact hate, more graveyard hate, and discard hate. That is the deck now. It's time to save the modern metagame. Be sure to subscribe if you want to see more content like this. Without further ado, here's the gameplay, and I hope you enjoy. Opening hand, one land, but if we can hit one more land, then we're looking really good. So we'll keep. Oh, looks like Jund. Oh, an abrupt decay. That was dirty. But a land, hooray. Proxa, that'd be fine. Fine, like Joe Mama. Discard Pyromancer. And we just need a land, please. Oh, that very nice. Question is, do we go with Blood Moon or Clothy? Because they could just fetch for a basic here. Yeah, but they wouldn't have a green source though. Yeah, let's go with the Blood Moon. Hooray. I want to pass this back. Other land, play Kalothi. Let's see how long our opponent lasts. They pass back. Eat Croxa. Play Pyromancer. Land and pass back. Opponent be passing back. Spank for four. And back to our opponent. Uh oh. A lightning Bolt. But unfortunately for them, tokens. Spank for four. And then Bolt. And then Bolt. <laughs> ah. Well, those three spells they played were really tough. But now it's on to game two. No one in the game two. Let's bring in this stuff for this stuff. And with that, let's go to game two. Opening hand, our opponent better have some discard. Or their cheeks are about to get clapped, and they do have discard. So there goes Magus. But Clothy, nice. Place for all, pass back. Oh, and more discarding. Okay. No more Clothy. Ooh, but Pyromancer, very nice. Play Pyromancer. And pass back. Uh-oh, opponent be passing back. It ain't looking good for them. Blood Braid into Ooze. Seven of them. And can they make a comeback? Oh, they abrupt to KR Ooze. We pull Baylock. Swing. Uh, I, I messed up. I played the land first. But oh well. Because there's a concede. Jund is good at trading one for one. But when one card makes multiple things, Jund just cannot handle it. And Gruul is a really tough matchup for Jund. But too bad. Now it's on to the next spanking. Opening hand has Utopia Sprawl, and our opponent's a Lurus deck. They could have discard, and we'd be in trouble, but let's pray no discard and keep. Oh, and it's Bogles. And we pull Arbor Elf, so we'll play it. And what is this? Our opponent swinging in the box. And Core Spirit Dancer. Pull another Sprawl. Pull away Sprawl. Then Moon. Then Sprawl again. Probably should put it on one land, but in case they somehow have land destruction. Yeah, that was probably a mistake. Okay, back to our opponent. Oh, and they have a basic planes. And they swing for three. And a scout. And another Sprawl. So we shall do this Sprawl. Seven mana. Blood Braid. Blood Moon. And Clothy. Swing for five. They trade. And now the race is on. Oh, Ethereal Armor. Testing us for seven. And they play Bogle. Oh, land, yikes. Well, swing. Opponent trades. Play ooze. Eat some stuff. And it's back to our opponent. A Spirit Dancer. And this time they're passing back to us. Another land, yikes. Pass back. Opponent passes back to us. Ooh, and Lightning Bolt. It's a tough call. Do we bolt their Spirit Dancer? Probably not. Because instead we can go three damage to them and finish them off on our turn. They will draw two cards from an enchantment. But with the moons out, I don't think it'll matter. So we'll pass back to them. They play a land. And go to end step. Well, that was a close call. But phase one of the spanking is complete. Go into game two. Let's dump this for this. And with that, let's go to game two. Opening hand, not fast enough. We'll mull. Ooh, this ain't great either. But we'll have to keep. And what? No turn one creature? How suspicious then. Ooh, Arbor Elf. Play Arbor Elf. Spirit Dancer. What a loser. Because we can do this. <laughs> Bye. Swing for one. And they put Luris in hand. Okay. But too bad. We have Clothy. Swing for one. They play Bogle. Rancor. Eat Spirit Dancer. Now, oopsie poop 
oopsie for them. Anger the gods and pass back. Oh, they play Lurus. Play something good. Cinder Vines, we could work with that. Play it and back to our opponent. Oh, seal of primordium. So no more Cinder Vines. And they get sealed back. And we really gotta kill this Lurus soon. Ooh, that works. <laughs> Bye. Opponent draws. Another sprawl. Okay. Opponent then passes back to us. We pull our barrel. And opponent passes back to us. Well, swing for one. Play moon. And we're one devotion away from Clothy. Oh, spirit dancer. And a spider umbra. Yikes, we pull a land. Nothing good to eat in graveyard either. And oh, how the tables have turned. Rancor, ethereal armor, and another armor. Yep, that is lethal. Ah, so close. But now beyond to game three. Game three, we swap in this for this and with that. Let's go to game three. Opening hand, very nice. We keep play arbor. They play scout. Ooh, and we have options. They could have path or enchantment destruction, but Magus is more aggressive. All right, so we'll play Magus, and they better hope they have a basic. <laughs> they be in much trouble. Blood braid. And the clothy. Look at that. And there be the concede. The power of the moon. Now it's on to the next match. Opening hand, we have a turn two blood moon, so we'll keep. Oh, and it's elementals. That vial is a problem. Oh, we'll play arbor elf. Oh, out of opponent passes back. Uh, okay. Play Magus. Opponent passes back again. Oh my gosh. Uh, whatever. Too risky to attack, so it's back to our opponent. A violin voice and a skeletal. Feral lands. Oh, goody. Swing for three. Opponent swinging for two. And a harbinger with a skeletal on top. Huntmaster, not bad. We'll play Huntmaster and pass back. Oh, and they flicker wisp our token. So much bullying. Opponent be swinging. Blocks like this. And Huntmaster flips. No more flicker wisp. Ooh, and blood braid. Nice. And the arbor elf. Oh, okay. Let's go on the offense. Swing. Back in the turn. Huntmaster flips. We go back to five. If they have skeletal, though, that would not be good. Oh, never mind. There's a concede. Huntmaster, very good there. It would have flipped on our turn, but now it's on to game two. Going into game two. Let's bring in this for this and with that. Let's go to game two. Opening hand, not spectacular, but it's not too bad. We'll keep. Opponent plays Harbinger. Putting Smoke Braider on top. Well, pass back. Opponent swings for one. And they play Smoke Braider. But too bad. All right. Play Ooze and pass back. Shriek Maw. So no more Ooze. Ooh, nice. Play Clothy. And pass back. Smoke Braider again. And if we hit a land here, we can hit Chandra this turn with Clothy. And we hit a land. No, but Blood Moon. So here's what we'll do. Make red with Clothy. Bolt and Blood Moon. Good luck to our opponent. Oh, but Awakener. Even though they still won to us, so like, not that big of a deal. And there is a land. And now Chandra comes out to play. Hooray. Look at that. She's so thick. Sixth loyalty already. That's a lot of Harbingers. They send one at Chandra. We shall play Pyromancer. Oh, and there's a concede. I can't say I'm surprised that a five color deck lost to six main deck Blood Moons. But to be fair, our opponent should probably get used to it. So I think that we did them a favor today. Now it's on to the next match. Opening hand is very good. We'll keep. Oh, this might be the mirror match. How interesting. Oh no, Magus of the Moon. Whatever shall we do? Play Huntmaster. Oh, what is these? Blood Braid into Utopia Sprawl. And they be swinging. Walk here. And here's what we'll do. Swing for three. And on our opponent's upkeep. On Master Flips, we'll take out Arbor Elf. They play another Arbor Elf. And they swing for two. Sure. And the turn, Bolt. Ooh, nice. Blood Braid. And there's a concede. That game had me a bit worried because the mirror match is not easy. Especially if they have Pillage and Glory Bringer. Going into game two. We're bringing in this stuff for this stuff. And with that, let's go to game two. Open a hand. Very bad. So we're going to mull. And we shall keep this. Someone plays Arbor. Can't do anything. Pass back. And it's Clothy. We pull Arbor Elf. All right. Play it and pass back. Someone plays Chandra. And they be passing back. Beast is problem. But let's try Blood Braid. Into Clothy. Okay. Three at Chandra. They chump. They make a mana. And play Blood Braid. Oh boy. They stomp again. Oh, Chandra's so good. At this point, I don't see us coming back. The Clothy will be a creature next turn. And Chandra keeps going. And so we're going to have to take it to game three. Go one into game three. Let's dump this for this and with that. Let's go to game three. Opening hands really late game heavy. I think we got a mole. And this isn't the worst. So we'll keep. Final plays Arbor Elf. See ya. Full land. Play Ooze and pass back. Oh, they stuck on one land. There be hope after all. Swing. Clothy. Oh my gosh, and there's a concede. I was so worried about this matchup. Going into this run, I was like, we're totally gonna lose to Pillage or Glorybringer, and it would make our version seem inferior, so I'm just glad it didn't end that way. And now we'd be at four wins. Let's find out if we can get that 5-0. Opening hand, no red source. Just don't think this will be good enough. Also, the profile picture is psyching me out. I've never seen that before. Modern champion. Oh, okay. So I feel like we need a better hand than this. We'll, we'll mull. Oof, not great, but we'll give it a shot. Oh, and it's Eldrazi. Let's just hope we don't get thought knotted. No, but Chalice of the Void, okay. Land, please. Oh, nope. We'll have to pass back. Well, I think we're in trouble. Do you hit a land? Like, how do we kill that? Take five. Play Mindstone. We hit a land, play Huntmaster. Swing for two. And it's back to opponent. We get spanked again for five. Another chalice. And yep, I think our opponent's got us. So we're going to game two. Going into game two. Let's dump this for this and with that. Let's go to game two. Opening hands pretty good. We'll keep. Start with our roll. They play Expedition Map. Now either Magus or Blood Moon. Could have this member, so we'll go Blood Moon. Oh, and they play Ballista. That is bullying. We pull Sprawl, but we'd have to choose between Sprawl and Magus. So with Sprawl, we could try and hit Chandra next turn. That's pretty good. Okay, fine. We'll go Sprawl. They play Tome, so they can scry and draw and all that. If only we had Collector Oof. We hit a land. Nice. Play Big Girl Chandra. Two to our opponent and pass back. And turn opponent scries. Eventually, they will gain four life from this thing. That's kind of a bummer. Opponent cracks a map. Grabbing waste. Another land. So play Blood Raid. Into Bolt. Sure. Swing for three. Up. Oh, never mind. Do damage here and back to opponent. Opponent scries again. Plays Karn. Grabbing Pithing Needle to stop Chandra. Could play both Magus, but we could also up Chandra, discard our hand, and get three cards that could be better. Very risky, but we'll try it. We do hit 
a bolt. So three here. Sprawling back for opponent. Opponent plays the needle. And now pray for some good top decks. Ooh, that pretty good. Play Hunt Master. Opponent draws and gains four. Cracks the map. Grabbing another waste. And a reality smasher. We be taking five. And we pull ooze. Cool. Didn't make this a five five. Yeah. All right. Swing for four. And now we oozing. But then we pass back. Oh, what is these? Thought not. Okay. And opponent be passing. Another Hunt Master. Okay. Play it. Eat some stuff. And pass back. Another smasher. So we'll have to pass it back. And hooray for flipping. Two damage to the thought. Two more damage to the thought. Ooh, but there's a concede. So we'll have to settle things in game three. Going into game three, I might regret this, but I think we need Cinder Vines. And with that, let's go to game three. Opening hand is not going to cut it, so we're going to mull. And all this is very good. I'm going to place land and passes. Oh, and Magus. This is a very tough decision here. We could just go sprawl into Magus. They might have this member. Or we can go Arbitrary and draw removal from them. Then no turn two Magus. Instead, turn two Collector Oof. You know, let's risk it and try and draw out that removal. Yep. They play Reshaper. Sprawl. And then Ooze or Oof. Which one? Let's actually go Oof. That way, there's stuff in Graveyard for the Ooze. Final Swings, we'll take it. Oh, and they can eat our Graveyard as well. Ooh, and a Thought Knot. Oh, boy. No Ooze for us. We do have a Pyromancer. Oh, my gosh. I still think we gotta go Moon, even though we're not in a great position here. Just gotta try and soak up all this damage. They swing. Risk it and trade. Probably not. Good thing we didn't. And we do hit a Ooze. The things still are tough. We'll keep rolling the dice. Swing for four. Play Ooze. And send it back to our opponent. Man, it's just like one rough decision after the other. We could Bolt and survive. We don't have much green here. Or we could trade. Or we could block and kill. That actually might be the smart play. Oh, man. If it weren't for the 5-0 on the line, this would be a lot easier. But all things considered, I think we got a block there. We get end step. We bolt. Hit a land. Another land. Ugh. Why'd they do this to us? Pyromancer? Not bad. If they have removal and we attack with two creatures here, they win. I don't see us blocking with either of these. So, yeah. I mean, we're just begging for them to kill us. No creature removal? Okay, then trade. Hit Urza's mine. Oh, we could deal seven this turn. Blood braid into another mag. Magus swing. They go to one. Can we actually get this? Oh man. Can't kill us with Ballista because of oof. They don't have a waste. They can't go reality smasher. I'm just not sure what they can do. And there's a concede. Oh my gosh. We actually got the 5-0. That's pretty gangster. I mean, Blood Moon basically carried us, but like still, it's pretty cool. And my big boys know just how humble daddy is. But can we take a moment to appreciate that both this modern deck and the last one were both 5-0s? And not only that, it appears we made Incinerator into a new archetype. We are changing the world one butt cheek clap at a time. But back to today's deck. I think the lesson for today is that you can never have enough Blood Moons. And with Blood Moon as good as it is against the current modern meta, it almost felt like the rest of the deck didn't even matter that much. Although Huntmaster was super nice. And the modern meta game, you know, it just, it just has to adapt. Decks have to be ready for a turn two Blood Moon. That's just how it is now. And I do think that's a good thing. Because by encouraging two color decks instead of three color decks, one way or another, Blood Moon will make the modern meta game a more diverse place. So I'd consider today a victory for all of us. And what better way to celebrate this momentous occasion than by buying Daddy's hand-painted deck boxes. They are available at decknut.com, which I recently fixed up and now looks slightly less shady than before. But until the next spanking, that is all. And as always, I hope you have a great day.